Well, good morning, everybody. It's truly a pleasure to be here today. A very special honor. I do have to thank Post Provost Terry Aldridge for this special touch as I'm uh, in the backdrop here on, what is it, the club level, we should say, at uh, Neyland Football Stadium here on the University of Tennessee's campus. So a very special treat today to be hosted. And more importantly, getting direct knowledge from Vice Provost Aldridge on the amazing admissions, academic things going on. So very excited to be a part of it. To give you a little background of Vice Provost Aldridge, she's been now over nine years here on campus, uh, leading efforts at the University of Tennessee. In addition to that, she spent seven years at Oklahoma State, or excuse me, Oklahoma State University in an admissions capacity too. And has really been a leader as I've gotten to know Carrie throughout 40 under 40, many impressive admissions, but as well as community events. So we're very fortunate to have her today speaking to our group, sharing great knowledge about the University of Tennessee. So without further ado, Vice Provost Aldridge, I will pass things over. Thanks so much, Jason. I appreciate it. I'm really honored to be here. Thanks for having me. As I've learned more about this organization and the work that Jason does, again, I'm just excited about engaging today and sharing a bit about what's happening at the University of Tennessee here in Knoxville. Um, don't be shy, please ask questions, interrupt me at any time. Jason's gonna help manage the chat. So you can either drop questions right in the chat as we go through, or again, feel free to interrupt me. Um, as Jason mentioned, I've been at UT. This is my ninth academic year, and it's just been an incredible time of growth at the university, a lot of change, and I couldn't be more excited about where we're headed as an institution. So excited again to dive in and share some of these updates with y'all today. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and we'll get started here. Let's make sure I can get this going. Okay. All right. This is our fabulous orange. You see a lot of it. Jason's rocking the tie today, which we love. One of the things that truly makes us unique is our color and it bleeds into our spirit as a university. Very unique. Our um, our graduates see this color around the world. We have over 250,000 graduates worldwide and we sport this tea with a lot of pride. So excited to introduce it to you today. Welcome to Rocky Top. As Jason said, we're, we're in our stadium here. Um, we are a member of the Southeastern Conference and the SEC for which athletics is slightly a big deal, um, but academics is also a big deal. So it's a really nice balance of experience for our students. We have a lot of students who come here really wanting to participate in our traditions, in the history of what it means to be a volunteer. And while they're here enjoying that and spending Saturdays with 102,000 fans, they're also getting an incredible education. So again, let's dive in and kind of learn more about what's going on here at the university. Where we're located is something that's very special. You can see on the left, the adventure. That's a picture of the Great Smoky Mountains, which is about a 30 to 40 minute drive from here. So we are located in beautiful East Tennessee. There is abundance of outdoor activities to do hiking, biking. We're right on the river. So a lot of paddle boarding and boating, fishing, lots for our students to engage in. And we have a lot of students who come to the university who, for which that hasn't been a part of their upbringing or their life, and they get to explore that and really put themselves out there and try new things um, in our backyard. We also are located in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is a vibrant little city. Um, it's a small enough city where you're not overwhelmed with traffic and some of the things that come with the big city, but we have a lot of the amenities of the big city. We have a symphony, an opera, an amazing music scene, lots of festivals, incredible restaurants. Jason got to try one out last night. Um, lots happening in our city. So again, our students have this traditional, amazing institution, but then can engage in the city of Knoxville. Um, and we, we do have an airport here with over 130 flights in and out. So it makes it easy for our students, especially those coming from out of state and their families to get in and out of the community. 
And I want to introduce you to our chancellor. She is phenomenal. She's been at UT a couple of years and leadership makes a difference. And where we are headed as an institution is really under her vision. And I'm going to just let share this video she put together kind of about where we've come as a university. I've been thinking a lot about the last year and all that we've accomplished here at UT Knoxville, this great, proud, land grant R1 flagship university. I couldn't be prouder of the things that have happened. And I want to share just a few of them with you. First of all, our enrollments hit an all time high record last fall of over 31,000 students. It was also the biggest freshman class we've ever recorded in our history. Those are both indicators that students are wanting to come here. Last year, from fall to spring, 96% of the students who enrolled in fall came back in the spring. That's a big number and it's a big increase over what we've done in the past. I couldn't be prouder of that. I was thrilled when just a few weeks ago, Forbes magazine named UT Knoxville. It's one of the best places in the country to work inside the state of Tennessee among large organizations. We were ranked third. If you look at the universities that were also participating in Forbes, we ranked first in the SEC. We ranked 15th in the country. We're doing good things and good things are happening. Last fall, we opened the new Zena complex in engineering. It's unbelievable and a model for the country and how to teach engineering. This past fall, we started the Advanced Manufacturing Institute. As a great interdisciplinary group, we're gonna be able to do even more significant, impactful research by working together across boundary lines. Our faculty continue to be ranked in the highest in the world in terms of number of citations. That's an indication of impact. I couldn't be more proud of our faculty who every day are working hard to make life and lives better for people in Tennessee and beyond. I'm also thinking about the incredible academic programs we have here at this university, some of which continue to re receive national recognition. Let's just take, for example, supply chain management, nuclear engineering, printmaking, School of Information Sciences, so many good programs that are attracting students and faculty who want to be here. We are ranked in the top 10 and have been for the last 10 years in recipients of grants from the National Endowment for Humanities. That's a, that's a great expression of the success we're having in all sorts of areas on campus. We also continue to be a big, full bright producer, one of the top in the country. And let's talk about athletics for a moment. We were the only university in the country who did the following four things in the same year. One, our football team went to postseason competition that would be the bowl game. Our men's basketball team and our women's basketball team participated in postseason competition. And four, the baseball team went to the College World Series in Omaha. That's a significant accomplishment. The men's basketball team won the SEC championship. The women's soccer team won the conference championship. The women's swimming and diving won the SEC championship. And there's an excitement around the campus and around the community and the entire state over what's happening on our campus. And I thank each of you for your contribution to all the good things that are happening. I look forward to many more. Our Chancellor, Dr. Dondi Plowman, she is an incredible leader. She's brought such a fresh, bold vision to the university. Um, we've been around a long time. We're 228 years old as an institution and always continuing to strive to become a better institution for our students and in serving our state, our region, and our world. So a little bit about faculty and students on campus. Our student faculty ratios runs about 17 to one. Um, we are in the process of hiring a big wave of additional faculty, both at instructional levels, but also at the tenure track and research levels, in part to support enrollment growth, but also to lift up um, this new vision that we're setting forth as a university. We're investing more in financial aid and scholarships, and I'll share a little bit about those details later on, but over $80 million a year. Um, our job placement rate for um, our students in either graduate school or career tracks after graduations runs in the mid 80s to high 80%. Um, this fall, our chancellor mentioned our enrollment. We had over 25,000 undergraduate students on our campus, a first year class of about 5950. 
And I really think our campus, one of the things that makes us special is our size. So I mentioned the amazing football stadium where Jason and I are coming at you live from today, 102,000 fans. But Monday through Friday, our campus body, our student body is about 25,000 undergrads, about 31,000 total enrollment with our graduate students. So it is such a nice size where it's a very personalized experience. That's something we strive towards. And I think think about these universities with 60, 70, 80,000 student enrollment. And I worry about students getting lost in the shuffle. And while we're growing, we're being really thoughtful about our growth to make sure we can still deliver a personal experience for our students. Academic colleges. Another thing that makes UT unique is that in the state of Tennessee, we are both the land grant institution, which traditionally has really strong academic programs in agriculture and engineering, but we're also the state's flagship. So we are both kind of lumped into one university, which means we have an incredible comprehensive academic experience for our students across the colleges you see listed. Um, our chancellor mentioned national rankings, some of our um, outstanding programs, strength and programs really, as I think about it, engineering, incredible, our Tickle College, um, variety of engineering programs that are consistently ranked among the top in the country. She mentioned the Haslam College of Business, our supply chain program is consistently in the top five. And if we've learned anything in the pandemic, it's that supply chain matters. <laughs> and I think there is a higher demand for supply chain jobs um, as we come out of the pandemic and move forward. So incredible program um, within our Haslam College of Business. And then because we are the land grant, we just have really historic rich programs in agriculture and natural resources forestry and because of where we're located our students really get hands-on experience in agriculture majors um, you know we talked about the smoky mountains in the middle of tennessee nashville some of you may have heard of um, the city of nashville there's a lot of farming in mid and uh, west tennessee so our students get opportunities to get out and really get a lot of experience as it relates to natural resources and agriculture we do have a few competitive programs at the institution, and as we've grown enrollment, these programs are becoming even more competitive. So College of Architecture and Design um, has a competitive admissions program, as does College of Nursing, which our College of Nursing is actually the toughest probably program to get into right now. Um, because of the clinical requirements and quality of education, we um, cap enrollment within the College of Nursing. So students can really get that robust um, educational experience. And it shows in their placement rate. So they have a 99% placement rate out of the College of Nursing, just incredible. The Tickle College has some requirements as well. Um, they're looking heavily at math and science curriculum and coursework as we consider students um, for admission, pre-pharmacy, and then school of music includes an audition. Um, and again, kind of reflecting on our stadium here, one of the most beloved traditions at UT is our football team runs through what's called our power T. You saw it on the, the first slide, that big T. Our band, our Pride of the Southland band, which is one of the oldest bands um, and such a huge giant tradition here. It is one of the favorite things um, for our fans is to see the Pride of the Southland form that power T the start of each game. I feel like our band has as passionate and big as a following as our football team. So band is a really big deal here. And it's pretty competitive to get into Pride and it is its own community but a pretty special, pretty special community that really lasts for a lifetime. Traditions are a big piece of why students choose Tennessee, and we hope we show these off when they come to campus. We're always creating new traditions, but when you've been around as long as we have, there are those traditions like I just described, running through the tea. Um, big Orange Fridays is a big tradition here. Um, I realize it's Monday, but this would be a great outfit for Jason to wear on Fridays because every Friday we encourage our alums and our students, no matter where you are in the world, wear your um, orange and tell your story on Fridays. Um, so that's a big kind of community building tradition. 
what you're seeing in this um, slide is actually our rock on campus and it gets painted sometimes multiple times a day. It is a free for all graffiti space where over time you may see a proposal on here from time to time. Um, you may see well wishes, happy birthday. It's also a place for our students to express their thoughts and feelings. So it is an area that often, again, will get painted multiple times a day. When we're in an election year, there's a lot that gets put up there and it is just free expression for our students and a wonderful way for them, again, to bring people together um, and express themselves. We also have, and you kind of saw this, there was a clip of it on the Chancellor's video. One of, I think, our most beloved traditions is called Torch Night. <clears throat> Excuse me. Every new student in their first week on campus is invited to torch night. And we talk about what it means to be a Tennessee volunteer. And we actually have glow sticks instead of live flames, but every student gets a glow stick and we all take a pledge together um, to bear the, the torch. Um, and there is our, our volunteer, um, our torch bearer statue and our volunteer creed, the one that beareth the torch shadoweth oneself to give light to others. There's a lot of institutions across the country, as y'all know, um, there is only one volunteers. And we are so proud and it really means something different to us too. We're not a bulldog, we're not a cat, we're not a gator, we are the volunteers. And that truly means something on our campus. And I love that all of our new students come together and get to learn more about what that means and what that means for the rest of their life and lifting up others, living a life that's more than about self. The student experience. So I mentioned this real goal and commitment of ours to make the experience personal. Um, even with an undergraduate population of 25,000. So I'm going to highlight just a couple of these things. Vol Success Teams is a newer initiative. We're into our second year, I think, on Vol Success Teams. Every new incoming first year student, every new incoming transfer student gets a Vol Success Team. And I think about this a little bit like celebrities have like their glam squad. They have these people who take amazing care of them. That is what Vol Success Teams are. Every student gets four people on their Vol Success Team. And it's an academic coach because like athletes, our students deserve being coached as well academically. Um, they get an advisor, of course, who helps chart out their degree plan. Um, the, their one-stop counselor, which our one-stop um, handles kind of the business of the college experience. So registration, scholarships and financial aid, financing, putting together a personalized budget. And then the fourth member of the Vol Success team is a student or peer mentor. So these folks are introduced early on for our new incoming students and they're who you go to. Whatever challenge you're having, whatever question you have, wherever you need help, your ball success team provides that wraparound holistic support um, for our students as they transition from high school career to college career. Um, living on campus. So um, I know Jason's got the amazing stadium that's under construction behind him. I've got behind me our campus. So you can see this a little bit here, our beautiful campus. We have invested so much in residential halls the last few years. So we've got a ton of new, um, new housing that's opened up. We just opened up an amazing, huge dining facility, which I'm gonna get to share with Jason later today that has a full-size Chick-fil-A um, restaurant on the base level because I will tell you, and especially here in the South, we love our Chick-fil-A. So there is a full-size Chick-fil-A restaurant. And then, um, three floors of additional dining that's basically fresh to order, including a whole section that is for students with, um, with food allergies. So a whole area and separate kitchen that's protected. Um, we know this is an issue for many students that come to our campuses and being able to provide, and the food is delicious, it's so good, but being able to provide a safe, place for students to eat that have food allergies where they don't feel shorted. So they're not having to go to a cafeteria or a dining facility with their friends and not be able to eat, it, eat anything. So big investments there, lots of clubs and organizations, um, amazing opportunities to study abroad. Um, so very comprehensive experience for our volunteers. 
Knoxville, Tennessee. So we talked about the Great Smoky Mountains. The Tennessee River is actually just on the other side of the stadium. One of our other unique traditions. We're one of three campuses in the country where folks can travel to our football games um, and tailgate by boat. And it's called the Vol Navy. And so on game days, you'll see boats tied up about 20 across um, and just tailgating, playing cornhole, lots of rocky top, lots of spirit taking place on the river. Um, actually, our softball coaches live on the water and they can travel to campus by boat and just tie up um, at our boathouse and come to work. So it's a pretty um, cool and beautiful setting for our students and our community of Knoxville. We are an artsy kind of town. So one of the things I fell in love with about Knoxville is just who we are as a community. There's always live music happening in town. We have an amazing historic and new theaters, um, just had a giant um, international festival music and film called Big Ears, where I always meet people from all over the world that just come into Knoxville to attend Big Ears. So it's a really vibrant place to live and encouraging students um, you know, you don't just spend four years on our campus, you're gonna get out in the community. So making sure our students get out and explore Knoxville a little bit because they're gonna be spending time in Knoxville in East Tennessee. So having those connections and understanding what makes this place special is, is really important. And then we have a ton of job opportunities and career partnerships here in Knoxville as well. Um, Regal Cinemas, um, big cinema agency, and then Discovery used to be HGTV um, purchased by Discovery Inc, but HGTV is based here. So a lot of times anybody who watches HGTV, House Hunters and a lot of those shows, you often will see Knoxville or Tennessee folks featured on there. Um, we've got um, TVA, which which is a, a huge utilities organization that serves um, East Tennessee and well beyond. Pilot Corp Corporation, so Pilot is one of our kind of biggest corporate partners. Our Haslam College of Business is named after the Haslam family, who are the creators and owners of Pilot. Um, and then I want to make sure I hit on Oak Ridge National Lab, because this surprised me before I came to Tennessee and really started working here. I didn't realize our relationship with Oak Ridge. So Oak Ridge um, is a huge national lab where researchers from around the world um, come to study and work here. It is home to the world's fastest supercomputer. So we kind of go back and forth in a battle with China, um, but we are often on top with the world's fastest su supercomputer out there. And our students can do research um, alongside our faculty at Oak Ridge National Lab. And for any history buffs, the secret city um, where the kind of hidden development of the bomb um, was done, that is Oak Ridge. So it used to be the secret city and now it's not so secret, but it's really, really hard to get into. You've got to have all kinds of um, security clearance um, and pre-clearance to get out there. But a lot of opportunities for our students to engage in research um, and internships too, which is great. So we are on this big orange movement. We've really been growing enrollment um, and it's an exciting time to be here as you heard from our chancellor. Um, we've got admissions counselors now positioned kind of all across the country. And it's been really awesome to see the growth and the interest that we have from students. Here's just a peek at where some of our applications came from last year. Um, and it's been amazing in my nine academic years here to really watch this transition um, and attracting students. I met, we had a huge recruitment event on Saturday. One of Jason's students was out here with us. I met a student from Sacramento, California. And as an Idaho native, it makes me excited to see nine students from Idaho on here. Um, trust me, the power of tea is flying in my hometown. Um, but we really have become a global national campus, which is so awesome for our students to spend time in the classroom with students from different places, different experiences, different ideas. So to become a Vol, some of the things we really encourage students to do, and y'all know this, um, 
is to visit campus, really spend a day in the life of what it means to be a Tennessee Vol, talk with students, engage with staff and faculty, and just get to see if this is feels like the right place. We do have virtual tours and virtual opportunities, of course, especially during the pandemic, really ramped up a lot of our virtual engagement opportunities. And then engaging with current students, which we can help facilitate. Our ambassadors are amazing and they'll give you the real deal and they'll talk to students about their experience. Cost of attendance, we know is a big consideration um, for out-of-state students. Um, this is based on this academic year, um, just under $44,000. This does include tuition and fees and of course room and board. So an average estimate of room and board. Um, and again, wonderful place to live, amazing housing and dining options on campus. So we're also invested in helping students finance that. Um, we know it's a big investment. We have some really amazing out-of-state scholarships, um, sharing, starting with the volunteer scholarship, which is based on test score and GPA. You have to have a minimum of a 3.8, and this is a UT calculated GPA. So we recalculate a GPA for every applicant. Um, and this is looking at 16 unit core courses. So those math, sciences, kind of history, English, um, and not considering those elective credits. Um, so again, you have a 3.8 or higher core GPA and meet these test score requirements This and meet the deadline of December 15th. This is a guaranteed award. So it really helps reduce the cost um, for many of our students. We also launched in the last year or so the Tennessee Explorer Scholarship, which is just kind of falls under that volunteer from an academic benchmark perspective. We know we have a lot of incredible out-of-state students who want to be here um, and are really prepared. So this one starts at a 3.6 core and then you can see the test score requirements there as well. And then the Beacon Scholarship. So along with many of our peers across the country, we did launch a test optional admission route for students during the pandemic that has continued this year and our board will meet in June to review whether or not to extend that program for another at least another academic year. What we have seen in early indicators is that our test optional students are performing very well on campus. Um, our chancellor mentioned our mid-year persistence or retention rates. We just had the highest persistence ever the highest number of students in good academic standing. And this is with our first ever test optional cohort coming in. Um, so really excited again about those early indicators. But as part of that, we wanted to offer test optional students scholarships as well. Um, so we launched the Beacon Award. It's based on a holistic read. So it's not a guaranteed um, it's not a guaranteed award. Our team reads um, and scores some different things as part of the beacon consideration. And we do require a 3.8 or higher UT core GPA. A quick peek at some of our dates from this year's cycle. These tend to be um, pretty consistent. So I don't anticipate a lot of changes for next year. Um, but that November 1 is kind of our priority early action admission deadline. So this is for students who really want to compete for some of our high level scholarships and honors programs. December 1 um, is when they have to have everything in that self-reported academic record, all of their materials for consideration. And we notified students this year on December 15th. So our early action applicants heard from us um, in mid-December about their initial decision. And then we have a regular admission deadline of December 15th. And th this is for institutional scholarships. So that volunteer, the explorer, the beacon we looked at. Again, if you apply, apply by December 15th, you're considered for all of those awards. And then we do honor a May 2nd this year because it's a Monday. Okay, May 2nd national confirmation deadline. So we're excited to hear from some of our vols. As you all know, this is decision time for students. Um, so we're excited as we work towards May 2nd to hear from our students about their, their choice. 
I wanted to lift up two other um, programs, which are relatively new for us. Um, we started a partnership a couple of years ago, actually right in the height of the pandemic, which is not the best time for um, a semester abroad program, but um, the students who have engaged have had an incredible experience. So it's called VirtoVol, and we invite, these are students who apply apply to UT, but we invite them to go to one of these four locations with other new balls. So they're meeting other new volunteers during their fall semester abroad, and then enter UT in spring after earning 15 college credit hours. We had about 70 Virto balls join us this spring. Um, and we hope to see that number grow for a lot of reasons. Um, one, it helps us from a capacity perspective as we think about housing and instructional capacity. But we also know these students come in with such a different perspective on life and on college and on their futures after spending a semester abroad, engaging in a community totally outside their comfort zone. So we feel like it's a really good fit for us as an institution. We also offer a Rocky Top transfer program with Pellissippi State Community College that's located here in Knoxville. And this program is for students who may not meet our first year entry requirements, but we really want them here on Rocky Top. So again, it's invitation only, but students who attend Pellissippi for that first year and meet the program requirements are guaranteed transfer admission and we and are eligible for special transfer scholarships for this group. Um, as we've grown enrollment and we're trying to make sure we set students up for the very best academic plan for them personally, we've really invested in these pathway programs and setting students up for success. So everything we do, you all know this, these jobs are really hard. <laughs> they can be really hard and really demanding. And so I wanted to share with you kind of what anchors me in this work. Um, and I always like remind our team, especially during such crazy busy times of year, like let's anchor in our why and come back to why we do this work. So I'm gonna share a video with y'all as we wrap up that just again is a perfect example of my why. every time I watch that video because it is such a huge moment for our students and families. And that is my why I believe the college experience is transformational. We want young people to find their place and find their right fit. And our team, we get to have just a small part in making that happen. And I wanna say thank you for the like really critical and important role y'all play in making that happen for your students and our students. So thank you for all that you do. I would love to take questions and keep the conversation going. So Jason, I guess I'll turn it over to you at this point. Well, first of all, thank you uh, for a wonderful presentation, Vice Provost Aldrich, great information. Two things before we jump into questions I can share is the passion and the why. Uh, through all of our conversations, I've been truly impressed with your energy, commitment to student success, passion for helping young people, and thank you for that. And also I can attest to, as you had in your slides, the uh, downtown Knoxville is very charming. It, it blew me away in the first two seconds. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, great artsy town, just 
just a lot of fun. I, I wish I had more time to stay, but uh, so it is a great area. It really surprised me in a very positive. I had great expectations coming in and it certainly exceeded on all those fronts. So again, thank you for your passion and what you do for students.